All right, well, good afternoon, and I want to welcome all of you to today's live monthly interactive presentation here at Litson RV, where we literally are only one mile north of the Winnebago Motorized Coach Division of Winnebago Industries, based right here in Forest City, Iowa. Uh, in addition to welcoming all of you as our guests, I also want to welcome all of the folks that put so much time and effort into uh, actually taking off with these live interactive presentations. Uh, I want to welcome Maggie Breister behind the camera. Uh, she's one of our marketing managers here at Litson RV. I want to welcome Hope Litson, uh, our marketing director here at Litson RV. Uh, Rhonda Gertis, who is a, a special events and marketing specialist. And also Heidi Thompson, who is our vice president and general manager here at Litson RV. And Heidi will be joining us today to moderate um, all of the questions uh, that we can take live as we walk you through uh, satellite options for your RV lifestyle. Uh, it's been a couple of years since we launched one of our most successful and most viewed uh, live webcasts, uh, our Satellite RV 101 video webcast. Uh, we also invited the folks from King Controls uh, back uh, during that webcast to help us in walking through satellite options. Uh, today we're going to update that with all of the new products that we have here in Santa's little workshop. Uh, we're also going to take it one step further as an added bonus for you and we're going to talk about uh, connectivity options in terms of boosting your connectivity while you're out on the road, uh, whether it's for personal use or whether it's for business use, uh, keeping you connected in today's society. We know how important that is uh, for all of you to stay connected to family, friends, and the workplace. Uh, we're going to walk through cellular booster options. We're going to walk through Wi-Fi options. And of course, we're, we're going to take all of your questions live. And I know we already have um, about 10 to 20 questions or so that have already come in. Also keep in mind that as we're doing today's live interactive presentation um, on a very specific component with respect to satellite and connectivity options, uh, we can also do a live interactive presentation on any of our in-stock RVs here at Litson RV uh, using our factory trained sales consultants where we can show from the comfort of your own home or office the things that are important to you on any of our in-stock RVs here at Litson RV, which we literally do almost on a daily basis, being able to provide a virtual appointment for you at our dealership here at Litson RV in Forest City. Uh, I also want to welcome all of our viewers today from Facebook Live, from YouTube Live, and for those that have joined us directly on our website at litson.com, uh, where today we'll be broadcasting simultaneously across all three channels and being able to take your questions live. So depending upon where you're viewing, if you're viewing on our website, uh, you'll actually see an opportunity to chat in your questions. Uh, we don't require any information, any personal information to be provided. Uh, you can actually just chat in your questions directly on our website. Uh, you can comment uh, within our Facebook Live uh, page any comments that you'd like us to cover. Uh, and then also on YouTube Live, off to the right, you'll see a chat box where you can chat in your questions. So with respect to today's format, what we thought we would do is walk through uh, satellite options for your RV lifestyle first. Uh, and we've brought a lot of different choices in today. We're going to walk you through each of those. Uh, then we'll actually cover any questions that you all have. I know we already have some questions that have come in. Uh, and then we'll wrap up with connectivity options for cellular and Wi-Fi enhancements. So again, this is one of our most um, highly viewed videos that we have in our video library in terms of the three different types of satellite technology. Uh, we literally have all the different choices here right in front of you. Um, we have stationary automatic, uh, which means when you actually arrive at your destination, you can press one button and you'll literally have satellite TV within about 20 to 30 seconds. Uh, we also have the capability of using in-motion satellite connectivity uh, so that while you're literally driving down the road, uh, you can be viewing satellite television uh, from behind the front cab area in your RV. And then we also have portable options, uh, which are the most cost um, effective uh, that you literally would just set out when you arrive at your destination. So we're going to start kind of with the, um, not necessarily the good, better, best, but one option that we feel and we, we've had the most success with. Uh, this is a stationary automatic satellite setup. Uh, this is actually a WineGuard Traveler. Uh, this WineGuard Traveler has been proven to be our most dependable uh, satellite option that we have in the marketplace today. It's stationary automatic. 
Uh, it can be used with direct TV or dish network. Um, it is unfortunately one of the most expensive options, but it certainly is the most proven and provides for the most seamless experience. So even though it looks fairly large right now, uh, this, uh, this guy actually stows to only 10 inches. So when you actually have uh, the satellite down and you're driving down the road, it collapses and stows uh, to a 10 inch height. Um, so very nimble in terms of um, height clearance. Um, it's available in two different versions, uh, Direct TV and Dish Network. Um, this happens to be the largest, which is the Direct TV setup. And if you've seen Direct TV setups on homes, townhomes, condos, that type of thing, you'll see that they actually have the largest stock and the largest bowl size. And that's really because uh, Direct TV will run across three different satellites. This is the only satellite in the marketplace today that will bring in Direct TV's entire high definition programming. Uh, cost on this guy is $18.99 retail plus installation. Um, it's fairly lightweight, 53 pounds is all that it adds in terms of weight. Uh, by contrast, the Dish Network version, which is slightly more narrow and uses a smaller bowl, uh, retails for $15.99 plus installation. Again, it stows to 10 inches uh, and it's 45 pounds in terms of weight. Now, we have a lot of pre-owned inventory that will already have these types of satellite options um, installed on their RV. And one question that we often get is, uh, what if I'm Dish Network or what if I'm Direct TV? How do I go from one to the other? Uh, this Direct TV setup can actually be retrofitted to a Dish Network setup using the same larger stock. Uh, we replace the reflector uh, and the dish itself. Uh, it's very affordable. Uh, the parts alone, I think, are roughly $250 to $300, and we can convert that to Dish Network. By contrast, however, you cannot take a Dish Network setup and retrofit that back to DirecTV. Heidi, did you have any questions that have come in specific to WineGuard Traveler before we move on to the next one? I do have a question that <clears throat> came in just regarding exactly what you're speaking of. You know, if you are going to take it from a direct um, TV dish to a dish network dish, are you compromising any, anything in terms of channel and programming versus just starting over? Yeah, good question. And if you start with a direct TV setup, uh, which has the larger stock and the larger deflector, and we change that to dish network, it doesn't change anything in terms of the gear assembly, the stock, the strength of the stock, uh, that type of thing. It's actually a more durable setup with a smaller bowl when you go from direct TV to Dish Network. Uh, but again, most of our installations are fresh, so we would select which one you're going to use. Um, but if you are a direct TV subscriber, and that's important to you, and one of the things that it could be important to you for is direct TV is the only satellite provider that actually offers uh, certain sports programming, including the NFL Sunday ticket. If that's important to you, you would want to go to direct TV and this is the only satellite in the marketplace available that will bring in DirecTV's entire high definition lineup. And further to that, there are some rumors um, and some thoughts in some internet forums that eventually DirecTV will take all of their high definition programming and make it the only option available to people. And so when that happens, um, it will make some of the other options for DirecTV obsolete you will have to go to a WineGuard Traveler to begin with. Uh, but again, those are rumors. I can't confirm that. It's just some things that I've read about because I'm kind of the geek here in the store and, and read about that stuff. So um, it is a possibility that in the future, all of DirecTV's programming um, will only be available um, in high definition. In fact, there are some channels right now that are not available in both high definition and standard definition. Then Craig on Facebook has a question just, can Whitson RV assist getting a satellite provider once uh, they pick up their coach? Yeah, uh, good question. And so um, we have satellite receivers here um, if you don't have one. Uh, I know one common question comes up is where do I get the equipment? Um, you see all the different advertisements uh, within the Sunday paper or, or, or online where you know, they'll wire your home in and provide you so many receivers at no charge. You can use a receiver out of your home um, or office and place that in your RV so long as it's compliant with the dish. 
Um, so that's a way to alleviate one subscription. Uh, perfectly happy with both DirecTV and Dish Network. They're both aware of that, so um, certainly is, is not a problem whatsoever. Did that answer that question? It does, and I okay. think if you go through the others, I'll have more to Okay, cool. So um, one thing to also keep in mind with respect to programming, um, I was going to cover this at the end, but since we kind of jumped into DirecTV versus Dish Network, just an overall rule of thumb in the RV lifestyle, Dish Network is much more friendly um, for the RVer compared to DirecTV. And that's no endorsement. I'm actually a DirecTV guy. Um, however, if you're an RVer and you don't care about some of that sports programming with the NFL Sunday ticket, go to Dish Network because as we jump into in motion and we jump into stationary automatic, um, what you're going to find is that you're going to have a lot more flexibility with Dish Network uh, than you will with DirecTV. So moving on, um, this is the second type. Uh, this is actually in motion on the fly. And in motion on the fly literally means just that. You'll be able to drive down the road uh, watching television um, and, in fact, possibly alleviating Sirius XM satellite radio because you have those audio channels in DirecTV and DISH network. So as you travel down the road, you'll have satellite connectivity um, through this type of a domed satellite. So this happens to be um, a Weingard uh, T4 is what they call it. It's an in-motion satellite. It's available both in black and white, uh, depending upon what type of a look you want. Um, cost on this is uh, retails for $13.99 plus installation. Um, very lightweight um, and also very nimble in terms of footprint. Um, it's only 13 and a half inches tall. Uh, it's only 14.3 inches wide. So this is a good opportunity for those RVers that are possibly in the van life movement that they use camper vans, that type of thing, because it uses a much smaller footprint atop the roof. Um, this is available right now for both DirecTV and Dish Network. Uh, just keep in mind that this satellite or any of the portables that we get into will not receive DirecTV high definition program, but you'll receive everything through Dish Network. Um, and again, that kind of goes back to what we talked about earlier, that Dish Network is just a lot more RV friendly. Um, the other thing that's convenient about this is power source, and that's one thing that I want to cover as we go through, because not only are we trying to help you adapt to your RV lifestyle, we want to make usage seamless for you. This is 12 volt in operation, and that makes a lot of sense if you think about it, because as you drive down the road, you don't want to have to require usage of your generator, and most RVs will have an inverter to power the satellite. So this is 12 volt in terms of operation, whereas the DirecTV and DISH Network versions of the Weingard Traveler, they're both 110 volt, which if you have an inverter built in is not an issue whatsoever, uh, but if you don't have an inverter built in, then you're going to have to find a way, which we can help with, um, to power your satellite receiver, because satellite receivers by nature are electric, just like you'd find in your home, so they're 110 volt. Any questions in there, or should I keep jumping? Keep going. Keep jumping. But okay. get ready, because I have lots of questions. Awesome. So uh, this is the third type that we're going to cover, most cost effective. Uh, these uh, literally um, are different versions where you get to your destination. Uh, we call them portables. Uh, you get to your destination, you can set it out, and uh, they're 12 volt in nature. Uh, this happens to be a 12 volt version. Uh, this is a Weingard G3. Uh, this is a portable satellite. Um, that is available for both Dish Network and DirecTV. But again, keeping in mind that you're not going to receive any DirecTV high definition programming with any portable satellite. But you can gain the entire Dish Network high definition programming from a portable satellite such as this. Um, this is 12 volt. Um, this actually gains its power through the coaxial cable. So if you set this out, you have a coaxial cable that runs from this portable satellite directly into your RV, whether it's the portable satellite coax or if it's the resort cable coax um, jack that you have generally on the driver's side of your RV. Um, this gains its power to function its satellite uh, from the actual coaxial cable. So on the other side of it, when the coaxial cable comes in, you literally have a small little power inserter that is provided uh, that does provide power to the satellite to run its gear motors when it's out 
uh, in the portable nature. Um, very lightweight, this is only seven pounds. Uh, it's only 13 inches tall. It's uh, 16 inches in width. So if you're trying to figure out what compartment it can fit in, 13 inches tall, 16 inches wide, uh, it's only seven pounds. Um, retail on this is 579. Um, also, this portable version could be roof mounted. And we offer a roof mount kit for it uh, that you can mount your roof and that's only $49. So it's a very cost effective way to do it. The only downside to this is if you think about it, now I've got a coaxial cable that I have to bring from my rooftop uh, into that electrical compartment. When we talk about just performance in the marketplace, so as you're watching television, one of the pieces of feedback that we receive, and we can hear it as well, is that when you use a domed satellite like this, whether it is in motion or even portable in nature, is the fact that with DISH Network, it's going to be moving from satellite to satellite. So as you change channels, and it requires that programming from a different satellite, you may hear the gear motor move a little bit. And that's going to be true in each of these. Whereas with the WineGuard Traveler in both DirecTV and DISH Network, it locks onto all three satellites at the same time and will not move until you stow it. So you'll never hear this guy run except when it's moving up and down. Ready for questions? Yep. Let's do it. So can you just speak generally as it relates to RVers, advantages and disadvantages between DISH and Direct? Yeah, um, Direct TV versus DISH Network. Um, some of the things, just to reiterate what we talked about, Direct TV really kind of handcuffs you in terms of how much um, flexibility you have in satellite options if you want high definition programming. And some of our TVs right now in our diesel pushers and even down in small of our some of our smaller Class C's and B vans, they're large TVs. I mean, we have 50, 55 inch televisions. And if you put a standard definition picture up on a 50 or a 55 inch TV, you can really tell the difference. You really want high definition programming. Um, all of the televisions that we use now are high definition in nature to take advantage of that 1080p or 1080i signal. Um, in fact, we even have some 4K uh, televisions now. So, by limiting yourself to standard definition programming, by using direct TV in either an in motion or a portable, really will deteriorate your viewing experience. Um, and then also just keep in mind, if you know, some of those internet forum uh, reports are true, and you have all of your direct TV high definition programming um, being required only on a high definition satellite, now your investment is completely obsolete because you're not gonna receive any direct TV programming. But people that have DirecTV and use a WineGuard Traveler absolutely love them. We have very, very few, if any, problems with a WineGuard Traveler. Uh, it's a proven satellite. It'll bring in DirecTV's high definition lineup. It'll bring in Dish Network's high definition lineup. Another reason why Dish Network is so much more RV friendly is they have just an incredible pay-as-you-go program. And we do a lot of these. Uh, because by nature, typically RVers are seasonal. So why would you want to pay 12 months out of the year for something that you don't use? Especially if you don't want the inconvenience of pulling it out of a spare bedroom or an office to place in your RV. If you want to leave that satellite receiver in your RV all of the time, you can do a pay-as-you-go program through DISH Network. Um, it works out extremely well. Um, prices range anywhere from $34.99 up to $99 a month. But the beauty of it is you can even go online um, and activate or deactivate the programming as you need it with absolutely no activation or deactivation fees. You literally only pay for what you use. Um, the other great thing about it is that if you're not internet savvy, um, you can actually call an 800 number, um, speak to a very fluent person that speaks great English and have a great experience to be able to activate and deactivate your DISH network pay-as-you-go programming. So Randy on our website just mentioned that a lot of direct TV users are reporting that they can't change their service address and get local TV channels anymore. Are you aware of this? And if so, what's the workaround when yeah. you're traveling? Yeah, so while you're traveling, if you can't change your address to get the local programming, that's going to be an issue no matter where you go. But you still should be able to get an East Coast or a West Coast affiliate for local channels.
And ne I'll just interrupt you because Neil, who's following us also on our website, said that his DISH app on his phone allows him to change the, uh, his local programming when he's moving. Through DISH Network. Through his app. Yep, through the app, through DISH Network. Mm -hmm. So um, even if you can't get the locals for where you're at, uh, remember most satellite receivers right now have an opportunity where you can program in those local channels directly into your satellite. Um, but worst case scenario, you're going to get an East Coast or a West Coast affiliate. It may not be the local for where you're at, but you'll still have an East Coast or a West Coast affiliate. Right. Eric Lewis on Facebook asks if he can get Detroit Lions games with either, and the answer is no. The answer is Definitely no. Definitely not. If you're DirecTV and you want to watch NFL Sunday, uh, Sunday Ticket, you can only um, pick up uh, NFC North games for the Minnesota Vikings, Mr. Correct. Lewis. Skull. Skull. Could you go over, there are a lot of questions regarding receivers yep. and number of TVs. And I think if you just did a general overview of basically how are you watching different programs and how many do you need, that would be helpful. You bet. So let's talk about that. Multi-TV viewing. So um, we have an RV that has multiple TVs. Um, we have one in the living room. We have one in the bedroom. We, we may have one outside um, so that I don't have to fight with Hope about her watching HGTV and me watching the Minnesota Vikings. You can split those signals. You can split those signals with any of these three types of satellites that we've talked about. So you have uh, dual runs for the Traveler, you have dual runs for the InMotion T4, and you have dual runs for the portable satellites. Now, what typically works best is um, to have a different satellite receiver um, for each of those different locations. In some models in the RV lifestyle, we have one armoire where we can house both of them. Um, in some situations, we actually have a separate receiver in the bedroom, and then we have a separate receiver in the living room, which will also generally, depending upon how we wire it for you, uh, power the outside entertainment center. Um, those are very simple for us to do. Um, the one thing that I like to put my shoes, myself, in your shoes, in terms of how I'm gonna use it, is knowing which type of a satellite receiver, and this is going to get a little bit technical, but which satellite receiver has an RF radio frequency remote. And the reason why that's important is so that you don't have to open up a cabinet door uh, to be able to point that satellite, excuse me, point that remote at that satellite receiver. So, for example, um, this is a Dish Network receiver, very inexpensive. This is an $84 Wally box. Um, it's just the, the model from Dish Network. Um, what's great about the Wally box that we use here is this is an RF remote. So I don't have to be pointing it directly at this receiver, which hopefully I'm going to tuck away so that nobody has to look at it, much like you do at your home. And since it's radio frequency, I don't have to have an infrared point-to-point -point signal. So these are RF in nature. Uh, they work extremely well, and again, this is for Dish Network. Uh, but this is a Wally box. We also have some versions of these that actually have um, smart TV capability with them. So they may have Netflix, Amazon, uh, Hulu, uh, many of those apps embedded inside the satellite receiver. Um, similar to that, we have direct TV receivers that can be used. Um, direct TV receivers um, are a little bit more expensive. They're a little bit larger. Um, but again, we have the same type of user experience. Did I even answer that question? I think so. Can you use your receiver box from home? You can. You bet. So, and DirecTV and Dish Network are fully aware of it. Uh, if you have a spare bedroom, if you have a garage location, an office location, you can take that satellite receiver and then very simply configure it inside your RV. Um, typically, we all say that we want to do that. But the way that we're wired, just through human nature, is we tend to take one receiver and leave it in our RV. Uh, because we don't like to uh, disassemble and hook them back up. So um, it's not that expensive to go to another satellite receiver, um, but then again, um, there's probably about a 7 or a $10 per month charge for each one of those. So <clears throat> there is a question, just how do I know if, if my unit, we don't have a dish, how do I know if it's pre-wired for satellite and or what TVs it's tied to? We have an outside TV, can I get satellite to that and who tells me what I can do? Yeah, that's a really good question. So nearly every Winnebago product um, is pre-wired for satellite uh, connectivity. The easiest way to tell, um, obviously you can reach out to us and we can look in the specs, 
The easiest way to tell is that if you are atop the roof of your RV, Winnebago literally has a sticker on the roof that is nothing more than a drill hair sticker. And right underneath that part of the fiberglass is where you'll find the coaxial runs, okay? And so typically those are gonna be anything that is non-van um, camper. So none of our van campers will be pre-wired for satellite, although we can install satellite um, on uh, Winnebago Eras, Winnebago Travados, Winnebago Rebels. Um, we can, uh, and we have. Uh, they're not pre-wired. It's not a lot of incremental effort, although there is a little bit of a higher cost because we have to run that cabling, uh, but we can certainly do it. Um, so again, you can look up on your roof, you can contact us uh, to determine whether or not it's pre-wired for satellite. Also, uh, with respect to the second part of the question, knowing what TVs um, are run to certain locations, most of that you'll just have to reach out to us and we can tell you what's run to that location. Um, if you have, for example, a Winnebago Adventurer um, on up, so a Winnebago Adventurer, a Journey, a Tour, a Grand Tour, um, those will actually have an armoire where you always set your satellite receiver. And then you can send that satellite receiver signal uh, to literally any TV within the coach. Now, most people don't have those types of products because most of the volume is in our smaller Class Cs and Class A gas coaches. Those are typically run with one coaxial cable that runs to your entertainment center and then a second coaxial run to the bedroom. And so if you are trying to hook up satellite for that location, the most cost effective solution is to just purchase another, you know, for example, $84 receiver and keep it in your bedroom and then keep one up front for your living room. Um, and then if you have outdoor uh, satellite considerations that you want us to make sure that your outside TV is hooked up for, uh, most likely we would just run an HDMI cable from the satellite receiver directly into that television. So that's a good segue to a question on a view Navion. Can you just, if you'd like to, use one box for both TVs and not install a second? You bet. And in fact, most of our Class C coaches, uh, the view and Navion, with so many of those out there on the road right now, um, just within the last two years, Winnebago has run HDMI cabling from that bedroom television up front into the same satellite location. So what we do there is we install your satellite. You would have house a satellite receiver in that location. And then we very simply just put in what's called an HDMI splitter. Um, it's really no different than the same type of coaxial splitters that you've been using at home for years except it preserves that high definition signal. So it would come out from the satellite receiver into the HDMI splitter. Both of those cables are already there. You would have the same signal playing on your front TV as in your bedroom TV. Good. Can I have DVR? You're smiling because even you understood that. I did. Can I have DVR for Direct TV or Dish Network? Uh, you can. Now, here's the caveat on that. If you look at the specs for DVRs for both DirecTV or Dish Network, um, for either of those, they don't recommend it. They don't recommend DVRs because literally there is a hard drive inside that DVR that is subject to the movements in the coach. Do people do it? Absolutely. Do we have a lot of problems? No, we don't. Uh, but there is that disclaimer on those DVRs uh, that you should not use that in an RV. They're not that expensive to begin with and very rarely do we even have one fail. Just keep in mind that if you are using DVR service, that you're gonna need two inputs into that receiver. So it's gonna take up both your coaxial inputs. Um, generally, DVRs are also a little bit larger uh, in nature because they do house that hard drive. So they're typically used more in, in larger RVs, although we've put them even in uh, our smaller 25 foot Class C's. Did that answer that question? It did. Bob on Facebook is wondering if he's ordering a new Forza from the factory, will Winnebago install a dish traveler instead of a direct TV traveler? Uh, to answer your question, no, they will not. Um, but that's okay. Um, we put in Dish Network um, wine guard travelers all the time. And it was a Forza, correct? Yes. So with respect to the Forza, you're going to have a couple of different options. And I'm going to take the time to go through this because this applies to a lot of other coaches besides Forza. So um, there is not an HDMI video selection system in a Forza, nor is there in most of the RVs out there. It's really just those adventurers, 
journeys and grand tours and tours where we have that entertainment armor. So there's going to be a coaxial run from the pre-wire into your main entertainment center up front. There's also going to be one run to your bedroom. So the most cost effective solution is to put a satellite receiver in the front and a satellite receiver in the back. Um, most people think that they will always live in harmony with their partner or their spouse and they say we're always going to watch the same thing but sometimes that can actually be more expensive because we have to actually run that HDMI cabling from the front to the rear. So the most cost effective solution is to have a satellite receiver in front and a satellite receiver in your bedroom. And then that bedroom receiver is hooked up directly to the TV. Correct. So it's hooked up from the satellite receiver in the bedroom into the TV coming off of that second coax that Winnebago runs from the satellite pre-wire into the bedroom. And it's probably at this point safe to say that whatever configuration we're trying to get to, we'll figure out. Absolutely. Dish, I mean, I, direct, TVs. Absolutely. I mean, we have done so many different customizations and creative solutions for our guests that you're in the right place and you're watching the right channel right now because we've literally done everything for people. So we're going to provide you probably the most seamless experience, uh, but we're also going to let you be aware of um, more cost beneficial solutions. So I just have a few remaining satellite questions and then we can switch to some internet questions. But um, for a Travato owner, what do you recommend when it comes to adding a satellite since there's limited space? And, and that's true of any camper van, um, whether it's a Winnebago Travato, a Winnebago Era, um, a Revel, a Paseo, uh, there's limited real estate up on the roof. Um, generally, we have the most success with this type of an in-motion system. So again, this is the T4 from Weingard. Um, Weingard is a great company. They're based here in Iowa, in Burlington, Iowa. Great people, great service, great technology, um, proven technology. And this footprint is only 14 inches wide. So it takes up the smallest amount of space. Um, from 2014 up until 2016 model year Travados specifically, this is really easy to put on. Where it gets a little bit trickier uh, is in the 17, 18, and 19s where we've loaded up that coach with 200 watts of solar up on the roof. Sometimes we're going to be forced to place this next to a uh, right adjacent to an air conditioner, which doesn't create any electromagnetic interference, it doesn't create any vibrations, um, but what it can do is if you're parked in the exact right angle, the air conditioner can block the in-motion satellite. And also just to clarify that, we cannot put on a Weingard Traveler um, on a B-Van uh, because of the weight. Again, these range between 45 pounds for uh, dish network and 53 pounds for direct TV. Okay, on a used RV with an old box style TV or yep. more, will satellite work without changing out the TVs? Uh, yes, if you um, still have uh, analog TVs, you're probably using a converter box to get local off-air signals. Uh, we can still use satellite um, options with a different type of a cabling system going into that TV. The only downside to it is you're not going to receive any high definition programming, period. So if you want a better viewing experience, swap out the TV. Um, TVs now are so inexpensive, it becomes more cost affordable. Uh, but we can do either. We can do whatever you ask us to do. Again, great questions today. If you have additional questions, remember we always staff our chat um, on Litson.com with true Litson RV professionals that are factory trained. Um, but great questions today as we walked through satellite options as well as connectivity options in terms of Wi-Fi and uh, cellular improvements for your RV experience um, here at Litson RV. Again, keep in mind the same type of an interactive presentation we can do from the comfort of your own home or office um, with any of our factory trained consultants at any point during the day that you'd like to go live and look at something uh, from the comfort of your own home or office, even if you're thousands of miles away or internationally, which we literally do on a daily basis for our guests here at Litson RV. Um, so again, great questions today and we appreciate that. One last benefit for each of you, um, if you have not already seen it, and Maggie, I'm going to make you move left. So on our website at Litson.com, on our parts page, we have built two things, and that's how much of a geek I am. So we have built um, an interactive multimedia satellite antenna finder tool for satellite, and then also one for cellular and Wi-Fi enhancements. 
where you can go through a series of questions and it will help pinpoint and provide specs and data on those types of either satellite antennas, um, satellite providers, or cellular and Wi-Fi enhancements for your RV lifestyle. So again, those are on our parts page on Litson.com. And again, we're really grateful for the opportunity to provide you this information today as we covered uh, satellite antenna options and Wi-Fi and cellular options for your RV lifestyle uh, here at Litson RV, where we're broadcasting live today only one mile north of the Winnebago Motorized Coach Division of Winnebago Industries right here in Forest City, Iowa.